Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Javier with The Real Javier Novoa, a channel, a platform, and a modality where we apply the principles of philosophy, spirituality, mysticism, and business to rapid lifestyle transformation. Busy weekend, ladies and gentlemen. I have a big video for you to start the week, to start Monday off very well. And we are going to be having a lot of exciting new videos next week, going into more of the specifics. You don't want to miss that, the specifics of rapid lifestyle transformation, as well as continuing to drill down the basics and to remind us of the principles of manifesting. As Marcus already said, we need to constantly have the principles of our philosophy before us and remind ourselves of them constantly so that we can put them into practice because the difficult thing is not knowing the principles they're relatively few the difficult thing is knowing how to implement them and practicing them not only getting better but strengthening your memory of them so we begin in earnest here and it's going back to the subscriber who emailed me and I did uh, put out a short video earlier today responding to some of uh, this uh, questioner's concerns and the questioner was saying that they could not get out of this muck where they could not feel better so today I wanted to talk about another approach it's an approach that a lot of law of assumption coaches don't want to really put out there or perhaps they don't know about the existence of it but it is a very well-known approach in Eastern philosophies and this is what we can call emotional jujitsu that's right it could also be uh, seen as emotional alchemy and this is in fact what the alchemists were after they were after the ability to convert base metals into precious metals but it was really a symbol of how we can convert our inner world from negative emotions to their opposites so of course First, you have to have a good knowledge of the unity of all things, knowing that there's not a dichotomy and therefore knowing that there's not an opposite. This is very important to keep in mind. A bad emotion is not the opposite of a positive emotion. In fact, this is proven in science and in psychology. Uh, physiologically, the emotion of excitement and anxiety or nervousness are the same emotion. The next time you are excited, I want you to ask yourself what's the difference between this emotion and anxiety of course the difference is ladies and gentlemen the label that we ascribe to it and the thought that we give to it this is key to knowing this so I want to go in this of course in the law of assumption methodologies in reality creation like we said in the last video probably the the best thing to do and the easiest thing to do in a lot of situations is to simply allow the emotion to wash, o <coughs> wash over you and to try to take no action on it, to try to do nothing about it. Because the universe conspires to find ways to make us feel good, to find ways to make us remember who we are, if only we would get out of the way. So you can just approach life in a meditative fashion, in a general fashion, what Vadim Zelen talks about, you can just very generally throughout your day declare to yourself that the universe is taking me for a walk, God is just bringing me good things, and you can go through your life generally, and it's a beautiful way to live, and we recommend this to a lot of our students, especially those who are in holding patterns, emotional holding patterns. However, my inclination is the exact opposite, because I'm a business person, and by nature I'm frenetic. My philosophy is that I'd rather act and get it wrong than just not act and just allow the thing to come to me just because of the fact that I'm so action-oriented and frenetic and I've actually had to train myself out of that because a lot of times it works against one. But nevertheless, the uh, subscribers to our channel are after rapid lifestyle transformation. We want to have our hands in the clay and we want to take action. So this methodology that I'm about to lay out here very shortly is a good way for people who want to take action to be able to transform their emotions very quickly and to be able to take action at the same time because the way I look at it it's a lot easier even if I'm 180 degrees heading in the wrong direction 
it's a lot easier to turn from a place of action than it is to start from a place of non-action. In fact, martial arts teaches this. If you're in movement, it simply takes less energy for you to turn around than if you had to start from inertia. So that being known, and all of these modalities being known, these processes are just to be used as they benefit us for fun and for the joy of the process. But this process does pack a powerful punch. It's powerful. And that is emotional jujitsu. So, what do I mean by that? Knowing that there are no opposites. For example, if you're feeling anxious and in, in, in anxiety, it's a simple technique. I want you to ask yourself, what if I'm not anxious? What if I'm excited? And feel that. That anxiety is excitement masquerading as anxiety. And in fact, most of the things that you're anxious about or that you interpret yourself being anxious about, it's really excitement in facing the unknown. If you can just embrace that, you can turn that feeling around in an instant. And this is something that even I've, I have not even heard Abraham Hicks or a lot of the other uh, spiritual coaches and teachers talk about is the fact that this is just from my experience. Uh, maybe someone did talk about it, but I've never seen it. But I've worked this out through my experience that on the emotional scale, the, the emotions that in which the numbers correlate to one another, I don't know, say 15 and 5, they are easier to get to the opposite than trying to get to a whole other emotion from that emotion. What do I mean? Well, let's use the, um, the term of anxiety. It's really, and this could have something to do with the energetic uh, mixing and so on and so forth, the energetic qualities of these emotions, but I think there are energetic correlates between emotions. And I can't prove this, but I can prove it in my experience. And you can try it and let me know how it works out. But for example, for me, even though anxiety and worry on the emotional scale of Abraham Hicks, if you look, contentment or boredom is a lot closer than excitement. Excitement's further up. But it's a lot easier to go from anxiety to excitement than it is to go to, from anxiety to contentment. Of course, you can, you can move your way up step by step the emotional scale, and it's easy to go from anxiety to, say, doubt, and then from doubt to pessimism, and then from pessimism to contentment, and so on. But it takes a lot less time. You can turn on your heels and turn 180 degrees, and I think that holds in the analogy to martial arts. I think it's an energetic thing. We're going to do more research on this, and I'm going to write on this, but you can translate the emotion to its opposite. For example, anger, extreme anger, and extreme enthusiasm. You can flip that to enthusiasm. Now, I don't recommend that you live in these extremes all the time, but when you're extremely angry, it's a useful jump. And you can channel that energy to help you in your creative endeavors, to spur you on. So for example, if you're anxious or worried about starting a new project, you can translate that worry into excitement, and then you can use that excitement as fuel to pursue your project. And like I said, the proof of this is that there is an emotional scale that Abraham Hicks talks about. And for example, anxiety is a lot higher than jealousy. So anxiety is a step up from jealousy. Knowing that, you can always use an emotion, you can look at it as positive, just for the simple fact that it is more positive than the emotion under it, it's more on your path than the emotion under it. I hope you're following me. So you can always use a negative emotion as fuel, and you can use it to turn on your heels and uh, attain the opposite. Because in reality, ladies and gentlemen, there are no opposites. Just another recommendation for utilizing negative emotions. Now, doubt is seen as a negative emotion, and this goes into general semantics by Korzybski. There is a great book, and of course we don't agree with everything, but the system is very sound. It's basically a system of general semantics, and you can look this up, and it's basically a system sort of like the emotional scale of being able to move up and down a scale at will to know what you're looking at, what you're dealing with, and in order to, to be able to evaluate situations. And so, 
in this general semantics, he talks about, for example, there's hatred, and then there's hatred of hate. It's the same emotion, but when you direct it at something, that emotion takes on an actual positive quality. So if you hate hatred, for example, you can neutralize that hate. Also, if you're anxious about anxiety, then that anxiety will stop you from focusing on the thing that causes the anxiety. So this is a very um, complex, complex practice, and you can try it yourself. I also help my clients through this in our coaching calls and help them to actually find the emotions where they can do this, where they can either turn it or invert it into itself or where they can actually choose its opposite and be there immediately. It saves you a lot of time instead of trying to step by step go up that emotional scale. Another use of this is, okay, doubt. Doubt is considered a negative emotion on Abraham Hicks' emotional scales under contentment. However, Neville Goddard speaks about this and he in fact talks about how Thomas, the doubting disciple for example, is symbolized by having doubt of anything that you hear that's against your wish, that's against your desire. So you can start to doubt the sensory information that comes to you that opposes what you want, that opposes you getting what you want. So for example, if you're starting a business and yet you see news of no income, you can say, I doubt that. But yet I know that my business is flourishing beautifully because I have that picture and I'm in that state and it will show itself very soon. So you can turn these negative emotions, ladies and gentlemen, and you can use them positively. It's a very subtle art and it's something that I've developed a lot in my own life and practice. Of course, I can help you out on a more personal level with this, but you can also do it yourself just through good, uh, good old trial and error and practice. But you can do this emotional jujitsu you can take steps and move in the direction of what you want and then feel anxiety and then you can transmute that anxiety you can use mental alchemy and transmute that into excitement and then you can use every single emotion that comes in your path as fuel to taking you down the path that is my friends emotional alchemy and that is emotional jujitsu. So thanks for watching. I have a lot of exciting videos coming out this week. More on the details of finding a place to stay and implementing your rapid lifestyle transformation. We're also working on the website. Some elements of that are going to be coming out in the next few weeks. So you don't want to miss that. Please subscribe and like to our channel so that you can get notified every time I release a video. And we can and the more people subscribe, the more we can get this information out. Thank you for commenting on the videos thank you for sharing the videos and thank you for joining me in this journey it's always beautiful to correspond with you and I'm always taking questions either in the comments or in our Facebook group or you can email me at and I'll put it in the description at Javier underscore Novoa II at hotmail.com. Also, email me for coaching calls at the same email, which I will put in the description, where I take you step by step down this methodology and I help you to utilize these tools. So, thanks so much, ladies and gentlemen, with great love and appreciation. We'll see you tomorrow.